Maths learners. So today I'm in my classroom and we're going to tackle the first section of your chemistry paper, organic chemistry, my favorite. Let's go. So we're doing organic chemistry. So organic, let's start with the word organic. When you hear the word organic, what do you think of? Surely you think of wholesome things, natural things, like you probably think about greenery and that's true, that stuff's all organic. But what about this kind of stuff? Like vinegar and petrol and coal. What do you think? You think that's organic? Surely the answer should be no. But actually, these things are all organic as well. They are comprised of organic molecules. So the reason for this is organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon compounds. Okay? So carbon is an important keyword here. Carbon. All of these things are made up of carbon. So this is your first big definition that you see on the screen right now. Organic molecules are molecules containing carbon atoms. And I need you to write that one down. As you'll see, it's here on your exam guidelines as well. Organic molecules are molecules containing carbon atoms. So now we're going to look at why carbon in a moment. We'll look at why carbon is so important. But here's an example of an organic molecule. So what you're seeing now is methane. So this compound over here is methane. You'll see it has one carbon atom over there attached to four hydrogen atoms. That is called methane. That will always be the structure of methane. And the reason why I, why I have cows farting over here is because methane is basically the component found in cow farts. Okay? So methane, why this is so bad is because methane is a very um, important greenhouse gas and as you know carbon dioxide is another greenhouse gas if you do bio you'll know this and greenhouse gases contribute to global warming and methane is actually a huge contributor to global warming and one of the things that is contained in this cow farts so apparently we eat meat we mass produce meat which means we need cows and all that, those things and cow farts cause global warming anyway interesting fact that's methane we will be looking at methane again. Okay, there we go. Burps containing a lot of methane. Farts containing a lot of methane. Feces, which decompose, containing a lot of methane. And that is why they contribute to global warming. Interesting. Okay, cool. Here's a compound that you or we all should be familiar with, Panado. But if you look at that, you might think, but ma'am, there's no carbons there. Just I thought you said that organic chemistry is a chemistry of carbon compounds. Um, this is university, we won't do this now, but basically every little corner over here, so there's a corner, there's a corner, every little inter point of intersection is a carbon compound. So basically this is the, comp the how Pinata is composed, oxygens, nitrogens, hydrogens, carbons in a nice little, what's that, a one, two, three, four, five, six hexagon. Okay. So, organic molecules, there are millions of different organic m materials and substances on Earth, and this is because carbon is so amazing. Remember earlier on I said it's all about carbon, 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 and then I said why is carbon so special, so this is what we're going to get into now. Now, you don't really need to know this for exam purposes, but I want you to understand it. So, what makes carbon so special? If you look at that cartoon carbon on the board, it has four arms. Now, if you think back to bonding of last year, think about carbon. What does carbon have? Okay, one, two, three, four. For what? If you look at the periodic table, there's carbon. One, two, three, four. Carbon is in this group, which means it contains four valence electrons. Do you remember that? So these ones contain one valence electron. These ones contain two valence electrons three valence electrons, and then the group that carbon's in has four valence electrons. So carbon has four valence electrons, which means that it can make four bonds, okay? It can make up to four bonds. Because remember, here's a carbon, one, two, three, four valence electrons. If I were to bond with this carbon, for example, and I'm a hydrogen, remember hydrogens have one valence electron, I can bond over there then another hydrogen over there, another hydrogen at the bottom, obviously I can't fit it in nicely, and another hydrogen on the side there. That's four bonds, and the reason why it can have four bonds is because it has four valence electrons, and remember, for carbon to be stable, it needs eight. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so carbon can be with itself, which we will see in a second, or it can bond to other atoms, like here it's bonding to a hydrogen. Okay, so that's what makes carbon special. What I mean by carbon can bond to itself is, here's a carbon, it can bond to itself like this. And then, it can have other bonds like this. Don't worry about this if this is freaking you out too much, we will get there. But basically, hydrogens can be on either side over here. You guys will see, filling the, this in is a pain, filling your hydrogens in. But, in total, each carbon atom has four bonds. So, let's just check it out. Let me just change my pen color to red. Okay. Each carbon has four bonds. So, one, two, three, four. See that? The next carbon, the same thing. It has one, two, three, four bonds. Okay, so in that way, carbon can bond to itself or to other atoms. Yeah, I'm just repeating. Carbon has four valence electrons, which means it can form four covalent bonds. So it can combine with itself or with other atoms. And it can form single bonds, double bonds, or even triple bonds. Now, this word isn't too important, but I just want you to know it and recognize it. Catenation, okay, catenation, catenation is the ability of carbon to make bonds with itself. So if they ever ask that in a multiple choice, what is the ability of carbon to make bonds with itself? Catenation. That means that carbon can bond with itself in a long chain or can form single bonds or double bonds or triple bonds. Here are some examples. Okay, so here, this first compound, we can see carbon. This carbon is bonding with itself. See, there's a row of one, two, three, four, five carbons. Same thing here, it's bonding with itself. Even here, but this is kind of bonding with itself in a loop. And here you can see other molecules attached to it, like there's oxygen, and then there's an OH. Okay, we will get there. But just recognize the chemistry of carbon. Okay, now hydrocarbons, organic compounds that consist of hydrogen and carbon only. That is another definition. Hydrocarbons, organic compounds consisting of hydrogen and carbon only. So if you see over there, that definition. So that means that there are certain organic compounds that only, only have hydrogen, H, and carbon C. Just like this one here. There's only H's and only C's. I don't see anything else. There's no oxygens, there's no whatever. Okay, and there's the slide again. What makes carbon carbon bonds unique? So you guys can read through that. It's not too important. Okay? But basically we can get a massive variety of products and that's why there are so many things that are called organic molecules because they're made up of carbons. And here is a beautiful organic molecule to end off this intro lesson, okay? Another thing, just to point out, every carbon has four bonds. One, whoops, one, two, three, four. Carbon can form bonds with itself and other molecules. And this is called organic molecules, molecules containing carbon atoms. Okay, so there's your first definition. Organic molecules, that should be in your book by now, molecules containing carbon atoms. And then the second one is hydrocarbons, this one over here. Organic compounds that consist of hydrogen and carbon only. Okay. So if you look on the screen here, there's three days of depicting an organic compound. These are all different types of organic compounds. So as you can see here, it's more like a picture. You can see each, co each atom is shown and there's lines, the lines are the bonds. This one, there's no lines. So these have different names. So let's go to the next slide. This little mind map I'd like you to take down in your book, this shows the three different ways in which we can represent organic compounds. So first of all here, I have the molecular formula. So a molecular formula looks like this. It just shows the atoms and the number of atoms in the compound. In other words, this organic compound that I've highlighted here has three carbons and eight hydrogens. 
um, illustrating it in this way, it's known as the molecular formula. The structural formula looks like this. It shows the structure of the compound. It shows the bond lines. And this one is condensed structural formula. So it's a little bit more detailed than the molecular, but it doesn't show the bond lines. Okay, so here's a little mind map. It'll be good to put this in your book and draw an example of each. This is the same mind, same mind map as before. It's just that this one has the definition associated with each of the different types. So this is the definition of molecular formula. A molecular formula is a chemical formula that indicates the type of atoms and the correct number of each in a molecule. So for example, this molecular formula shows that this organic compound has three carbons and eight hydrogens. Okay, the type of atoms, so carbon and hydrogen, and the number. Then we've got structural formula. So as you can see here, it shows which atoms are attached, attached to which within the molecule. So for example, I can see that this carbon atom over here that I've highlighted is attached to a hydrogen, another hydrogen, another hydrogen, and a carbon. And the atoms are represented by the chemical symbols, so C for carbon and H for hydrogen, and the lines show the bond. As you can see, these are single lines, which mean single bonds. If we try to represent a double bond, it'll be a double line. And then the co condensed structural formula, it's a notation that shows the way in which atoms are bonded, but it doesn't show the bond lines. And I will go through a more detailed example of this later. But for now, this is the three different ways we can represent organic compounds. And here's the definitions of each. Okay, so let's look at this in more detail. Representing organic compounds, the molecular formula. So a molecular formula, like I said, there's a definition. We can ask this definition. It's in italics. It's from your exam guidelines. You need to learn it. For example, in this, co in this compound, we have two carbons. So you can write here two carbons and six hydrogens. These are all examples of molecular formulae. As you can see in this one, we have a bromine atom attached to this compound. In this one, there's an oxygen and an additional hydrogen. We'll go through all of this at a later stage. You will know how to name these compounds. You will know what groups they're from. So at this moment, don't worry. I just want you to recognize that if you see something that looks like any of these, this is the molecular formula. Then the structural formula. So it shows, again, which atoms are attached to which others within the molecule. Like here, you can see we have two carbon atoms and one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogen atoms. So as you saw on that um, slideshow now, this is the structural formula. It shows the structure of the compound. It shows that the carbon is attached by single bonds here, single bond here to a hydrogen, single bond here, single bond here. If I were to take this organic molecule and I were to write the molecular formula for this, I would say, okay, cool, I have carbon. How many carbons do I have? Two of them. And I have hydrogen. How many hydrogens do I have in this molecule? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the structural formula and this one is the molecular formula. But both of these are representations of the same compound. This one gives us a little bit more information because we can see the bond lines. We can say which atom is attached to which. Okay. Then we can take a look at these. This is more examples of structural formulae. Again, you can see the bond lines. You can see which atom is attached to which others. It's like a picture, basically, of the molecule. Remember, these in real life are 3D, so... This is like a 2D representation of the molecule. Here's another one. In this one, you can see there's a bromine atom attached there. Here, there's a double bond with the oxygen. Here, there's an OH group at the end. And we'll learn how to name each of these types of atoms. Then the last way of representing an organic compound is with a condensed structural formula. So it's kind of like a structural formula, but it's a condensed version. It doesn't show the bond lines. So if you look at this structural formula over here on the right that I'm moving with my mouse, this one here. This structural formula has one, two, three carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. So... Instead of writing the molecular formula, which would be C3H8, 
I can do a condensed structural formula. So if you look here, this is the condensed version of this. So let's see how it works. So here's a carbon. Okay, the first carbon is attached to one, two, three hydrogens. That's why it says CH3. The second carbon is attached to two hydrogens. That's why it says CH2. Then the last carbon is attached to three hydrogens. That's why it's CH3. I hope that makes sense. So now you guys are going to quickly pause the screen, tell me what you think. Is this one molecular, structural, or condensed? Okay, this one is condensed. What about this one? That's structural. And this one, I kind of put this in here as a little bit of a, a thingy. This isn't exactly a structural, but it's not exactly condensed either. It shows bond lines, so it's more structural than anything else. But here, this, this isn't correct. This isn't a fully, a full structural one. This should show three lines with the H's on. Okay, so you won't get stuff like this in your CAPS curriculum. This is a molecular formula. And so is this one, okay? This one at the bottom here is a structural formula. Now, just to recap, every carbon must have four bonds. We spoke about this in lesson number one. So this carbon here has four bonds. One, two, three, four. If you look at this middle molecule, this carbon that I've highlighted here also has four bonds. One, two, three, four. So does this carbon. One, two, three, four. And you can check in organic chemistry, every carbon atom must have four bonds. And why four? Where does the number four come from? The number four comes from the fact that there's four valence electrons. Then every hydrogen atom must have one bond. So you can see here, this hydrogen atom is a single bond there. Every halogen atom must have one bond. So a halogen is Br. C, L, F, or I. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Okay, those are the halogens. And if they're attached in an organic molecule, they only have one bond. Every oxygen, if it's attached alone to a carbon, must have two bonds. So if you look here, this carbon is attached to this oxygen by a double bond. Here, in this case, there's an oxygen attached to a carbon, but the oxygen is also attached to a hydrogen. So it's an OH. There it's single bonds, but if the oxygen is attached alone, it's a double bond, okay? And these are the definitions that you need to go over. So we did organic molecules and looking at how to name the different homologous series, starting with alkane. So if you like this video, remember to give me a thumbs up, tell me what you want to see in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and share with all your science friends.